Hi guys, it's Craig here, and welcome back to another easy home brewing session. Today we're talking about something called mead. Now, I've been asked to do this, and many people have been waiting a long time for this, so thank you for your patience. For those of you who don't know, mead is a form of wine. It's a wine that's made from, uh, from honey. Now, traditionally, wine is made from grapes or other sorts of fruit. Uh, but mead is a type of wine that's made from honey. And if you add fruit to your mead, then the mead becomes melomel, which is a sort of an offspring of just plain mead. And what I'm going to be doing today is actually a melomel because I am going to be adding fruit to this mead recipe. It's very simple. I'm going to go through the steps as easily as I can. I have two people to thank uh, for this and I'll be doing that along the way as we go. First of all, let's get to the ingredients we need here to make my version of Melomel. Okay, so the first ingredient we're gonna talk about is honey. Of course, uh, this is uh, local honey that I got f courtesy of somebody who calls himself Hogdruck on Justin.tv. I'm not sure if he has a YouTube channel, but he was kind enough to provide me with this. He lives all the way in the Netherlands and uh, he had this sent to me. He said, if I send you some honey, will you make some, some uh, mead? And I said, sure, I will. Well, it's been a long time that he's waited for this. Okay, so we've got our honey, right? Now, for this mead recipe, I'm going to be using some fruit. And it just so happens that I have some oranges here. Now, I will tell you that uh, a good friend of mine, Imeladius, did a, wine re a, a mead recipe recently on his channel using oranges as well. Um, so I watched his video, which he has on his channel, and I, I'm sort of following that procedure because he's done it and he's had success with that. So that's what I'm doing. Now my wife went out and bought a big box of these and we haven't been able to, to eat all of them in time. Some of them I had to throw out because they were starting to go moldy. So I've collected these <laughs> and I'm going to save them and put them in this, in this uh, meat as well. So this becomes officially melomel now because there's fruit in it. Okay, as well as the oranges, I'm also going to add some frozen raspberries. May not be these particular ones because these have been in the freezer for a while. They've also been opened and we've been using them for different things. But I will be putting two bags of, fr of frozen raspberries in the recipe as well. So we've got the honey, the oranges, which I'm going to squeeze in a moment, and the raspberries. The raspberries are not going in right at this point. They'll be going in later after about a month and I'll be covering that as well. We've got our yeast here. I have two packages of Lalvin uh, EC1118 yeast there and I've got some yeast nutrient here as well. This is what I get from my local home brew supplier. It's just a white powder yeast nutrient. So once again we've got our oranges, about a dozen oranges there, about 10 pounds of local honey. We've got our yeast there Got our yeast nutrient and two packages of frozen raspberries. Let's get started. Okay, now there's three things I'm gonna do in preparation for this. One of them is I'm gonna heat the honey up in a sink full of hot water so that it pours easier because honey is very thick and it's coming out of small holes. So uh, this is a great idea helps you out a lot, saves a lot of time. In the meantime, I'm heating up about one gallon of water to about 150, 160 Fahrenheit, which I'm going to use to pasteurize the honey. Um, this means that I'm gonna remove any uh, bacteria or bugs that, that might interfere with the fermentation. We don't want that. So we're gonna make sure that all that stuff is killed. So I'm gonna do this for about half an hour. In the meantime, I'm going to squeeze the juice out of the oranges that I have. Okay, so, I mean, there's lots of ways of doing this. Call me old fashioned. I don't have a juicing device. I have a juicer, but I don't know. I'm just gonna do it this way so I can make sure I get all the juice out of the oranges. I got clean hands, freshly washed with soap and hot water. I'm just gonna squeeze the juice out of these little clementine oranges. See how much juice we uh, we end up with here. You know, this is the first time I've made mead, so you know I'm I'm doing this from the seat of my pants. I have done, you know, 
considerable amount of research on it. Okay, so what I ended up with there was about just over a cup or 300 milliliters of orange juice. It's not that much, but hopefully it'll give it a little bit of flavor. And there's probably some pulp in there, so I'll probably filter that through a sieve and we'll get started with our pasteurization. Now this whole process of pasteurization is kind of, I guess, controversial. There are people who've had very successful batches of mead and melomel without pasteurizing anything, and they have had no trouble. In my case, um, I'm playing it safe. You know, I have, you know, honey here that specifically says on the label that it is not pasteurized. It takes a half an hour in some 150 degree water. You don't want to boil it. I'm told that, you know, boiling it can hinder some of the flavors of the honey, but I am going to pasteurize it for half an hour. And, and during that time, I'll go downstairs and sanitize my carboy and get everything ready for the final stages. All right, let's add our orange juice and our honey. I might actually um, add more orange juice um, later on when I do uh, transfer to secondary fermentation, because this isn't very much. There we go. You can see how easy it pours when it's warm. Now that brought our temperature down to about 150, which is fine. I'm just going to bring it up just a little bit so that while it's pasteurizing, it doesn't go below 150. Some water in here, hot water, to rinse this out. Oh yeah, just a hint of citrus. Definitely taste the honey. I can, I'll, I'm probably gonna add a little more orange to it when I transfer it to the secondary in about a month, just to give it a little more citrus flavor, but that's a great must. I'm gonna turn off the heat. It's at 160, and I'm gonna put the, uh, the lid on. And let it pasteurize for half an hour. In the meantime, I'm going to sanitize my equipment, my carboy, stir spoon, and finish this thing off. All right, well, that's been sitting for about a half an hour in there. It's pasteurized, I'm sure, uh, at 150, 155, something like that. So we're good to go. I'm going to put it into a sink full of ice water, get it cooled down. So when we put um, our top-up water in, it'll be down to a decent temperature of pitching yeast. I'm doing a four gallon batch. Now it's four American US gallons. Um, that's what I'm doing. And when I add my raspberries in about a month, I'll be adding more water to it. So it'll bring it up to about five gallons US. Carefully dump this through the funnel. My carboy has been sanitized with star sand. Sanitized hose here, not to worry. Gonna fill right up to the bottom of the uh, thermometer there. That's five imperial gallons. Sorry, five US gallons. All right, so my level is just below the thermometer level. So when I tip my carboy, I can get a temperature and it looks like it's 24 Celsius. 
and I'm happy with that, so I'm going to pitch my yeast. Okay guys, well that's it. That was easy. It really was. The hardest part about that was filming it <laughs> for YouTube. So, but uh, it's all there. It's, the temperatures are great. The yeast pitched. I'm probably going to move it somewhere so it's not in my way because it's right in the middle of my brewing area. It's going to take about a month to ferment and then we're going to transfer it to a secondary fermenter and add more fruit to it. The raspberries and probably some more orange juice. Um, just because, you know, why not? You know, it's going to be a good, fruity, nice tasting mead, or mellow mel, if you will. So that's it. The original gravity I took was 1.085, is what it was. So that's pretty strong at the moment. Well, we'll see what happens to it when we add the extra fruit, and there's going to be some extra water added to that as well. It's going to end up being about five gallons uh, US in the end. And um, this is going to be a long procedure. So I'm looking forward to you guys following along with this. Um, there'll be another video out in about a month. And from there, it has to age, and we'll be tasting it a little bit along the way. So this is an ongoing thing. But I really appreciate you guys watching. I know you waited a long time for this. I'm enjoying myself a Cooper's European Lager. Homemade beer. Yeah, babe. Cheers to you. See you next time. Got about, I don't know, a dozen oranges there, little clementines, and a couple of bags of frozen raspberries. That scared the crap out of me. All right, so it's been about a half an hour. It's just been sitting there at uh, 150, 160, 155, 160, something around in there. I can just taste the orange just a little bit, so I know I'm gonna be adding a little more when I transfer to second berry. Second. Blah. Also, I want to thank Immoladius for uh, helping me with this recipe. In fact, what I'm about to do is very similar to what he did in his recipe uh, on his video. You can check that out too. He did a did sick a Ouch.